describe me as a workaholic. They like to call me money bag jants. <laughs> and I think it's so funny because they think I'm always working, always doing something to increase revenue, to make money. They think I, they think I live and breathe boutique, live and breathe these sweatpants and this loungewear. I don't think that they think my life consists of much else, when in actuality, it consists of a lot of sleep. <laughs> Very normal hours of sleep, by the way. Lots of relaxing, lots of Netflix and chilling. I like shopping online <laughs> for things that are not sweatpants and loungewear related. Very normal. Very not work related. <laughs> so today, I started running a sale yesterday, so I'm sure there's lots of orders that need to get processed. Um, I have my coaching call with my accelerator students this evening, so I need to prep for that. Got to make sure that my sister and my husband haven't completely ruined the business, JK. <laughs> make sure that all the orders are in, in order. Make sure that there's no order issues. Make sure the business runs smoothly. I am a online boutique owner and coach to e-commerce brands. Big jams, big money jams, period. I ate this whole pack of turkey bacon by myself. It was good. Did I turn it on? Is it on? Oh, yes. <laughs> I feel like Betty Crocker right now. <laughs> oh, oh, that's stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> I want to save it for my husband. This is me every single day messing up something in the kitchen. That's why I don't come in it often other than for fruit snacks. Like it said non-stick, but it's, it sticks. <laughs> the bacon isn't as burnt as I thought it was. It's actually pretty good. <sighs> I told my husband that I gotta get a, um, a Rolex. <laughs> or something shiny for my wrist because I'm tired of rapping all these songs and when I say I'm putting my wrist up, ain't nothing on it. Like, I need to put something on it and it needs to be shiny, flashy. <laughs> I worked at Express for like 45 days. <laughs> I actually hated that job a lot, a lot, a lot. It is so strange to be there. Um, when I worked there, I was 17 years old. I was just a teenager who wanted, you know, some extra cash so I could buy myself clothes. But being here now is like totally surreal and I'm starting to realize how much of an impact my first job had on my present. Um, I don't think I ever realized, you know, folding pants for three hours, five times a week would ever play a role in my future. Um, you know, being able to visually make a rack tell a story or I didn't, I didn't know that I was making a rack tell a story. Um, I just knew I was following the directions that were provided to me. It's funny, I hated this job. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I hate, look, see, wait, I'm, I'm literally fixing this right now. Like, why am I fixing this? I don't work here. It's a habit. Inside of Forever 21, I am pretty much a, a, a worker. <laughs> I'm fixing the clothes. I'm literally picking the clothes up off the floor that somebody else has dropped. I am refolding the jeans because they don't look good. Pick things up when they fall. Be a good customer. I am about to rearrange the entire store, basically. Oh my God, I gotta stop fixing this stuff. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> I think I could do a much better job than they've done. So uh, I want to completely tear it apart and put it back together. I gotta stop before I completely organize the whole store for them. <laughs> I really wanna just like 
change everything around. This is quite interesting. Running a store is hard work. It's a lot of manual labor. When you have a brick and mortar, you have to really, really rely on the visuals of your business. They, they really do play a huge role in somebody's decision to actually shop with you. So what's crazy is right before I got my job at the thrift store, I had applied for a few jobs because uh, the Limited was getting ready to close. And so I was like, well, I haven't, I haven't been in Forever 21 in, that, in a while, and I went in the Forever 21 in St. Louis, and they were hiring uh, for a couple of management positions. So I applied, and I had like two interviews, and they did not give me the job. I was like, what? I have so much experience. I've worked here before. I made a huge impact in the positions I've had. Why y'all ain't gonna hire me? <laughs> so, so disappointed, but it worked out in the end. <laughs>Business is great. No, uh, <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I was okay. telling them, I was like, my, one of my old managers, Amy, still works in the mall. So I was going to come see if you're here. I think that's awesome, though. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I had to wake up from naps to come into Forever 21. I know. We just came from down there. Um, I was telling them, how I used to spend hours folding the freaking jeans on the tables. Yep, yep. And so now when I take it just yep. the Yeah, so now I'm like when I fold my sweatpants, everybody always asks me why the, why the stacks look so perfect. I'm like cuz I spent hours folding yeah, jeans. That's what we did. <laughs> yeah. So we um went to Forever 21 and so crazy. I don't think I realized like how much of an impact it played in my content and you know, how much of a Stickler I am for organization as it pertains to, you know, what my closet looks like. <laughs> it's crazy. So I have worked basically everywhere you could think of under the sun. Forever 21, Aeropostale, Abercrombie, Bed Bath & Beyond, Toys R Us, Ikea, Dillard's, Wet Seal, Hollister, DKNY, Michael Kors, Toomey, Saks Fifth Avenue, The Limited, Aldo, Baker's, J. Crew. <laughs> the list goes on and on. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. And the thrift shop. Uh, yeah, everywhere. Working there, I don't think I really realized how different they were. I knew the merchandise was different. I knew the pricing was different, but from a business owner standpoint from a marketer standpoint I didn't understand I didn't understand branding I didn't know what branding was until I had my own and I thought I was just adding things to my resume for you know the next job but really I was adding things to my resume for this one the one that I created for myself so this used to be revive thrift shop which is my last full-time job ever. And um, it closed, as you can see. Um, and it's the reason why I decided to launch my own business. Ironically enough, when I was working at The Limited, which was the job that went out of business before this one, um, someone approached me for a job here. And I, it, I didn't initially want to take it, um, but I looked into it and decided that I really liked the environment. So I came to work here and um, Eventually, this one unfortunately closed as well. So, I, you know, I was presented with the opportunity to either find a new job or start something on my own. And I decided to, you know, take that leap of faith and try something for myself. There's literally still the wall that we painted uh, when I worked here for the nonprofit that owned the shop. Uh, we painted this wall in the back of the store with a uh, chalkboard paint. And we wrote out like the values for the, um, Nonprofit that owned the shop at the time and they still have the um, the desk that we use for bringing people out and all of that good stuff so it still literally looks exactly how we left it as far as the paint and the walls and everything it's crazy so a lot of people don't know that um, I actually met my husband here um, I hired him the first month that I worked here and uh, we spent a lot of 
time with each other face to face 40 plus hours a week right here at the shop and somehow along the lines we I guess fell in love so you guys will get to meet him and uh, hear a little bit about us working together here and then also him working with me now uh, for my own online boutique. So Brazen is my online boutique. It is my where my love of fashion comes into play. It is also where my love of retail uh, gets to come to light. The Boutique Academy is my coaching business. It is where I get to teach my love of retail to others and help them to build a business that is going to eventually, hopefully become their main source of income. It's gonna become, um, you know, the thing that takes care of their bills and that allows them to take care of their families and things like that. So um, one kind of plays into the other and they, they coincide in, to some degree. Everybody has left me. Turn the lights on. Don't mind my messes. <laughs> I ran a big sale um, like last Tuesday or Wednesday, and we're still getting through those orders. Um, almost done though, which is good. I try to stay away from running sales because you don't want your audience to become dependent on you giving them discounts. Uh, you, if you do that too often, then they won't shop on just a regular day. They'll wait till you have a sale. Um, so I like to do my sales really randomly. Um, randomly, but with strategy, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't like them to be something that people were expecting me to do. Um, so last week I decided to make my best-selling item $7.70 because it was July 7th, 7-7. <laughs> and um, it completely took everybody by surprise. They, they aren't used to me running a sale and they also aren't used to me running a sale on my best-selling item. So it was something that they already loved and I knew that no matter what I made the discount, they would absolutely buy it. So I mean, I could have made it, you know, $15 versus seven, but I wanted to do something that was funny and really outside of the ordinary. So right now I am going through um, week two's homework. Um, so some of the ladies are behind on homework. Some of them are, you know, right on, on task or on the correct module for the week. Um, so I, I like to go back and look at um, any that are submitted later, um, just to see how many there are. And I'll skim through them just to see if there's um, any questions that they had about the, the questions. Um, and I go through each one, each one of the boxes and I respond to them. I'll leave a comment to say, you know, this is great, this makes sense, or, um, you know, you might want to think a little bit more deeply about this. Um, so right now we're looking at the target audience um, homework, and uh, which is module two of the program. And they talk about, basically they're trying to clarify who their audience actually is for their boutique. Um, and every question on the homework is for the purpose of helping them dig deeper um, because a lot of boutique owners classify humans, um, or their audience who are humans, as just like an age. They're like women between the ages of blank and blank. Um, so the purpose of this homework is to really help them dive into who that general description of their audience is on a deeper level. Um, so you clarified her age, you clarified um, where she lives or 
you know, how many kids she has and all of that. But now I want you to create like a buyer's persona um, and think through who she actually is, what, she, what she's like in real life, what problems she might be facing, what are her goals, what does she talk about, how does she spend her time, where does she spend time online. How's your week going, everybody? We're on week, are we on week four or week five? We're on week five? Are y'all on week five now? Yes, we're week five. Yes, week five. Are y'all, um, thank you. Jasmine said I look good. Good. <laughs> thank you. Thank y'all. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so how are we feeling about week five? Lots of ads. Look, who's shaking their head up there? Who is it? Lelisha? <laughs> Listen, that's my question. I put on my question. I'm like, honey, I... I can't even go to week five because my mind's still up on one through four. So <laughs> I got through like three of the videos on five at top. <laughs> Understandable. Y'all still, I just, it amazes me still, even though we're on week five, it still amazes me how many questions y'all come up with every single week. I'm like, y'all, y'all be having question questions. <laughs> me feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for these ads. Uh -huh. And is that, like, is that okay? essentially because my brain true is still like week one through four is where, is where my focus just really needs to kind of horn in on and execute with yes that is totally fine um ads so ads ads is something that enhances something that already works um i, I think that's the most important thing to know so you know, if you can't pinpoint something in your business that you know already works, whether that be uh, your content, your your imagery, your um, your messaging, um, if that your website being amazing, things like that. Um, I mean, it doesn't even make sense to run ads. Um, personally, personally, that's you know my thoughts. Um, so yeah, I think it's perfectly fine to not feel ready to run them or to not want to do them just now. It's important to me to tell my story because I think a lot of people have been presented with uh, what they think it means to have an online business, specifically a boutique. They either see you know, all the packages all over the floor and it's like, wow, I can't wait to get to that point. Or they see, you know, the really popular girl who has always had like a love for fashion or been, been no, known for her fashion sense. And to, to a lot of people, it seems very easy. It seems like if I know fashion, if I know clothes, if I've had a retail job, I should be able to do this too. And that's not to say that you can't, but there are so many pieces that are missing when people, you know, tell you that you can do it too. Um, I, I think it's very easy for anyone to say you can do it too and you can, but they don't tell you how you can do it. They don't explain to you the things that you should be thinking about as you build up to that point that you want to get to. Really, you need strategy. You need uh, effective content creation. You need effective marketing. You need to know how to build trust with people. You need to know how to provide great customer service and you need to know how to make all of those things work together to, to build a brand that people love and that people want to give you, give money to, that people want to support. I come from a retail background and I've seen the inside of so many different businesses. I know what it, what it looks like to, um, you know, bring branding into the, the mix of things. For a lot of small business owners, they find success, but sometimes it's without branding or it's five years after they started their business or it's 10 years after they started their business. I started my business almost three years ago and I made a hundred thousand dollars in, you know, within a year of starting a business. It doesn't have to take five to, to 10 years.